This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. It's that time again, everybody. It's time for that everyone's favorite quiz show. Guess the five silhouettes in the bottom of the screen. Okay, I think one of them's Gumshoe. Which uh, one? The one on the right. Uh, the one on the left is uh, uh, James from Liberty's Kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I can't really tell for the other one. The one in the middle is probably Edgeworth. One on the right is somebody? I can't tell because the new game and continue buttons are over them. Oh, one of yeah, one of them has like a fox tail, so <laughs> they must be like a togwell or something. Sure. Awakening. <laughs> and the other one I couldn't tell. And uh, anyhow, it's time to start episode two, Turnabout Airlines, also known as the episode Marty actually gets to talk. I want it. Let's go. It's gonna be great. I actually don't remember the opening for this. The murder that occurred in my office. <laughs> what is this music? The return of the great Fifi Adagarasu. For a sec, I thought this was, um, what, the canon song? Thinking back, everything began on that fateful day two days ago. Apocalypse canon? Yeah, that one. Everybody plays it like... Two days earlier. So this takes place before the first case. Ugh, I'm dead. Maybe? Oh, it's just, it's wine. Grape juice. It's red grape juice. Wow, that's a very fancy- Ooh! My favorite airline! I fix! I fly. Oh. I couldn't Yes, tell. everything began high up in the air, 9,000 feet in the air to be precise. Sorry! <laughs> Thank Bye. you for flying. I fly airlines. We're currently experiencing some slight turbulence. We are asking all passengers to please return to their seats and fasten their seats. I thought that was two Kristoff Gavin statues for a yeah. second there. <laughs> And then a random red line. That's just... Oh, oh you're looking at the wrong screen again. March 12th, 6.14 a.m. Flight I-390, first floor lounge. Ugh. Why is Edgeworth? Oh, I guess he's not dead, so that's good. He can't be! This is two days before the first case! <laughs> it, it could be like Ghost Trick, where you're resurrected. Why do I feel like I just woke up from a horrible nightmare? 6.13, huh? Guess I was out cold for about 10 minutes. Ha! Huh. Slight turbulence indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently experiencing... Slow text. Some slight turbulence. For your safety, we ask that you return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. I suppose turbulence is to be expected in a flight. Yeah. Though admittedly, I'm less than comfortable with anything resembling earthquakes. Poor dude. Ugh, my wallet ruined by juice! <laughs> What's this? A travel wallet? But it's not mine. How did someone else's travel wallet end up in my pocket? Ugh, my head. Why won't this headache go away? I'll take care of this travel wallet later. Or hand it off to an attendant. Ugh. From earthquake-like turbulence to an elevator. Poor guy. DL6 all over yep. again. Yep. Hmph. What am I doing hesitating like this? Actually, I know full well why I hesitate. It was when I was still but a young child. I was caught up in a murder that happened in an elevator. Maybe there's stairs? But how long am I going to let my past haunt me? It's just an elevator. I'm a grown man now. I need to behave like one. What? What the? Mr. Stewart? Not it's again! It's Mr. Stewart! <laughs> what in the world happened? Oh, that was kind of weird art. Is there something wrong, sir? I must ask that you please return to your seat. Eek! <laughs> He's dead! Please calm down. We mustn't jump to conclusions without all the facts. I have no idea what she's like, so... Well, what's wrong? Did something happen? You murderer! What? N no! You have it all wrong. It wasn't me. I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> March 12th, 6.41 a.m. Flight I-390, second floor, first class. We're at in first class, y'all! Of course first we class? are. Look at that dude! He has like all the 12 drinks. bottles! It's way more than 12. 
It's one of that. There's a guy down here with like a ma the biggest steak you ever saw. And that that guy's got oh, the biggest life preserver you ever saw. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have an important announcement. What's up with her ponytail? It's like it's like a square, like a complete solid. Artie, it's square. a bun. No, look at that. It goes ch ch, and then ch ch. It's like it's a bun. That's not round. Buns are round. That's um... not round. Yeah, it does kind of have it's a It's literally angle, like, it's like two squares. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm one of your flight attendants today, Rhoda Tenaro. 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 Unfortunately, we've just had a minor accident on this flight. An accident? Don't treat us like we're stupid! I got a glimpse and it was a murder! What? The murder? What's going on with this flight? I need my Everyone, tricks. please calm down. Th there's no re reason to panic. This flight will stay on course and make its scheduled landing. We are still currently in the middle of a rough patch of turbulence. So until we are out of this area of turbulence, I ask that you please remain seated. Oh, someone was killed, right? Uh, what about- Oh wait, oh, hang on, that's the guy eating maybe? Oh, someone was killed, right? I mean, what about the killer? Let me off! Please! Oh, <sighs> please, there's no need to feel threatened. We've already apprehended the culprit. He's handcuffed to his seat. I ask that everyone please remain calm. What in the heck is he talking about? Why should we remain calm? My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecutor and I assure you I am not the killer. Ah, being a prosecutor doesn't make you incapable of murder, buddy. Remember <laughs> man from Von Karma? Remember Godot? <laughs> <laughs> now you listen here. I am not the killer. I simply found the body. So you say, however... I'm sure that you were the perpetrator of this film. Or this film? <laughs> this crime. This crime! They're actually what filming a movie. <laughs> that explains all the weird characters. <laughs> I swear on my honor as a professional flight attendant. Oh, is that right? I know what I saw. And there's even very strong incriminating evidence to back me up. What kind of incriminating evidence is she talking about? We've already alerted the proper authorities at our destination. Until we land, you will remain in custody by the powers vested in our captain. I'm very sorry, but please understand our situation. Most flight attendants are supposed to have longer skirts than that, aren't they? Um... Or at least tights? Yeah, I was about to say, at least tights. Your situation? I'm more concerned with mine and the direction it's going in. I'm not about to just sit idly by while I get accused of murder. Miss... Tenero, is it? Yes. I was wondering if you might give me a chance. A chance? To do what? A chance to plead my case. And a chance to ask what you mean by incriminating evidence just now. To accuse a passenger of such a grave crime without allowing him to give a proper defense. Can the professional flight attendant inside of you really call this action righteous? You have a point. Very well. I'll listen to what you have to say. But be wary of what you reveal. I'm afraid you'll only look even more suspicious if your explanation fails to satisfy. I also do not have the time to deal with you all day, so please make it quick. Of course. As you wish. Good. Very well, then. Let's get started. I know for a fact that I didn't kill that man in the elevator. What I don't know is what sort of evidence she has up her sleeve. But I'm certain it doesn't fit with how the crime really occurred. We're getting a testimony already. What Miss Tenero saw. I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm certain you are the killer. The scene I saw in front of the elevator, it was you standing there with fresh blood dripping off of the murder weapon. So if you would please cooperate, we'll turn you over just as soon as we land. That's it? That's her evidence? I don't think you could ask for a more perfect witness testimony. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Not really. It's hardly perfect when there's a gaping hole in it. <laughs> I like Edgeworth's, like, handcuffed uh, yeah. pose. Yeah, it's he really looks kind of funny. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, oh. nothing but the truth. <laughs> tell me, what exactly puts the pro in professional flight attendant for you? Well, it means we're very professional about how we take care of our passengers. Services like fetching papers and responding to calls are done with speed and accuracy. I can assure you that I can give testimonies with the same level of professionalism. 
But I'm sure you've already realized that by now, right? It's a bit hard to appreciate your professionalism when I'm the one under suspicion. How old is this lady? I don't know. Mr. Stewart. <laughs> he uh, looks he looks more like Mr. Stewart than Kristoff does, right. I think. Well, kind of. Right. Uh, she's 24. Wow, good for you, Rhoda. 24 and you're a flight attendant. Now whenever I think of Rhoda, I think of the chicken from Animal Crossing that we met. <laughs> The rainbow chicken. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and there you have it. My professional testimony is accurate and reliable. It's as to the point as my hairdo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it got spiky. You certainly seem sure of yourself. Of course. A professional flight attendant can't afford to make mistakes, after all. Perhaps. But you must admit there are few who can look at a murder with a clear mind. We attendants all go through extensive training and are always calm and collected. We'll even calmly serve you coffee, if you so wish, as the plane makes a splashdown. I fail to see how that would be the calm and rational thing to do in an emergency. Even until the bitter end, we are there to serve the passengers. That is the duty of all professional flight attendants. I know what her hair looks like. It looks like those are Rubik's Cubes. Where yeah. you can, like, turn yeah. them. A little bit. It's so weird. How do you get your hair to be that pointy? A lot of hair gel, apparently. I don't know. It's actually a wig. Unless if... The one thing that you could do is... Okay, there's this, like, bun thing that you can put in your hair where it literally looks like a donut. And then you stick your hair through it, and then you can make a bun with less hair. Um, if there's a square version of that, it would make the exact okay. same impression. You certainly are confident. Anyway, shall we return to your testimony? Scene I saw in front of the elevator. Yes. What did you see in front of the elevator? That's what I was just about to tell you, Mr. Edgeworth. Framed by the, ele the elevator doors and bathed in the light coming from within. It was you, standing there with fresh blood dripping oh, off the murder weapon. The murder weapon dripping with blood? Really, now? I swear that that was the grisly scene I saw before me. Thank goodness it wasn't a passenger who saw, or there'd be widespread panic by now. As I recall, you were quite panicked yourself at the time. Excuse me? You were scared enough to misread the situation and accuse me of murder. Nonsense! Professional flight attendants can't afford to be that flustered. I witnessed the murder scene, and now I'm listening to your defense, all with a smile. <laughs> her smile's twitching. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently you also lie with a smile on your face. So if you would please cooperate, we'll turn you over. Hold it! I'm not the culprit, and yet you would keep these restraints on me? Mr. Edgeworth, please try to understand what kind of situation you are in right now. And what exactly is my situation? I have the backing of the captain to keep you bound in this way. We are within our legal right to restrain anyone who might threaten our captain mid-flight. But only the captain! Not the passengers! Not the other people working! Just the captain! This is your captain speaking. speaking. You've won a cruise. <laughs> in essence, you are in the same situation as someone who's been arrested by the police. I hope that the captain is Patrick Warburton. <laughs> I'll be, yeah. I'm Patrick and I'm your chief flight well, attendant today. So, am I to stay restrained until I can clear up all of her doubts? At least I'm close. Her mistake shines like the silver lining on a dark rain cloud. And I'm going to capture some of that light with evidence. Okay, well, this pretty obvious. pretty obvious. We don't even know. Is. It's a wallet. And it's grape juice. Miss Tenero? What is it with the yelling all of a sudden? Ah, force of habit. Well, it doesn't matter. Miss Tenero? You say you saw the murder weapon dripping with blood? Is that correct? Yes. All that blood. Drip, drip, drip. Just recalling that scene sends a chill down my spine. Sorry, but your so called professional flight attendant training has failed you. What? I'd like to direct your attention to this. Do you know what this is? It's a travel wallet, right? It looks a little big and bulky. The thing you saw me holding when I discovered the dead body in the elevator was this very travel wallet, Miss Tenero. What? Impossible! Now then, do you still think I'm the killer? That I killed him with a travel wallet? But, but, I, no, but I, I saw blood dripping from the wallet. I know I did. As you can see, this wallet is cle clearly stained. But if you would be so kind as to take a whiff, I think you'll agree it's only grape juice. The, 
then, then... That's right. You mistook grape juice for blood. The murder weapon dripping with blood does not, in fact, exist. No! There. That should clear up the pesky accusation. Wait just a sec. That is... I mean, even a wallet could be deadly if it was wrapped around something heavy. I demand that you show me what's inside. Please. She's trembling, and she tacked on please at the end. Sounds like I've got her. There's no need to look inside. Even you can tell from its appearance that it's light. No! I can't be sure of anything until I see the contents of that wallet for myself. <sighs> She's persistent. I suppose we have no choice but to see what's inside. Miss Tenero, if you would be so kind as to open the wallet and check its contents for me. Alright. My... I usually don't pry into passengers' belongings, but we have no choice here. Oh, now we can perfectly see the people. Ah, uh, there's a girl with a ponytail, a girl with a foxtail, Gumshoe, um, James from Liberty's Kids, and Edgeworth. The perfect, yep, sounds that's like the a... perfect crew of people. It seems that this passport is all that's in here. As you saw, there is nothing but a passport inside. This renders your wallet was the murder weapon argument moot. Wouldn't you agree? Please, hear me out, Mr. Edgeworth. What is it now? Well, I was wondering, whose passport is this exactly? Can I take a look? Why not? I'm rather curious myself. My hands are tied. The this is. Ac oh, I want to type P. He's a Passage. person. Acby Hicks, Republic of Borginia. Ha. Okay. He's a male, and he's got his signature. And he's a person. <laughs> he looks like the father of, I think that's um, his bull what's his face? Is there blood type P? No! It's blood type A, B, A, B, AB, and O! What does type P mean, That's then? what I'm asking! Is it, does it mean he's a person? Also, he looks like a total criminal on that front. <laughs> like, he looks so mad. Just as I thought. This travel wallet belonged to Mr. Ackby Hicks, which makes it the victim's property. I don't think she has to yell there. You... you stole the victim's wallet, didn't you? How dare you! You said it yourself. You claimed to be holding this wallet in your hands when I found you. Perhaps I did misconstrue... Misconstrue... Misconstrue the wallet for the murder weapon. But it seems I wasn't wrong about who the culprit is. Is this just gonna be like Edgeworth versus the random lady? <laughs> For the whole case. For the whole case? <laughs> As you claim, the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. However, it is something that you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with the vile deed. I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks' money, weren't you? So even though I didn't have the murder weapon on me, you still suspect me, I see. You stood up at the crime scene with the victim's wallet in your hands. How can I turn a blind eye and not suspect you of foul play? It is a little suspicious. Her logic, or lack thereof. Murder weapon's not the travel wallet. Shouldn't that be proof enough for you that I did not murder the victim? Not at all. Oh, and why not? Because that wallet may not have been what I thought it was. However, it is something you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with the vile deed. You think I stole it? Yes! I'm very sorry to say it, and I wouldn't usually be so rude, but it must be said! I never thought I'd see the day, but here I am calling a passenger a thief! Maybe I should put a serious face and say it more directly. I believe you removed the wallet from the victim's person personage. 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 Why am I failing words today? It really doesn't matter how you phrase it. What I'd like to know is why you think I stole Mr. Hicks's wallet. I find it hard to believe myself. Hold it! Hmph. I don't think I have any sort of motive to speak of. I've never met Mr. Hicks before, and our only connection is this one flight. But that is more than enough of a reason. How do you think? figure? He was sitting in the first class, and I think the implication is quite clear. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks' money. 
Also, Edgeworth. I would being get bold. paid so much for the beat of prosecutor. Get paid so much. Two twenties every month. <laughs> <laughs> you you think I was after his money? Where, where did that come cockamammy idea come from? <laughs> True, you are also a passenger in first class, but I thought something was off about you and those deeply etched lines on your face, forehead. They're not lines! They're perfectly normal and a part of any natural face. And mine. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met someone with such terrible countenance on a flight before. And that's when it hit me. You have the face of someone with money trouble! She really is making a fool of herself pursuing this line of logic. I should spare her and present the piece of evidence that contradicts her testimony. I have a prosecutor's badge. Therefore, I make money. No. That would have been such a good... He has a lot of money oh, in the elevator that we, we didn't take. I didn't see that photo till now. Yeah, never I, I know, at I know. It. Oh, hey. Flight itinerary. Crossword puzzle. Oh. And the oh, flight the itinerary. Oh, the Sky Magazine, my favorite. I wonder if I might get a word in, Miss Tenero. What is it now? Miss Tenero. I wonder if you noticed the contradiction within your own testimony. What are you talking about? It's simply obvious- it's simply impossible that the motive for this murder is monetary theft. One glance at the crime scene should have told you that. What about the scene would prove the motive was for the murder was not money? Well, we didn't take the solid gold statue, for one. <laughs> Oh, I need money. This proves the killer's motive was not monetary theft. Where am I supposed to be looking? Please recall how the crime scene looked. I'm trying, but all I can see is you taking the wallet. And the deeply furrowing of your eyebrows and the lines on your forehead. Dirk! There's no need to recall those specific details, thank you very much. Now, what can I show her to prove my point? In a way that even she would have I basically understand. just gave her my voice. I noticed. Plus... Plus, like, if I'm annoyed at work. Yeah. If I might direct your attention to the fiends strewn all over the floor. Ah! That's right. The floor is covered in bills and coinage. She doesn't seem weird, which is part of why. Yeah. By your rationale, these were the very fiends the killer was after. Ah! I think we can assume that the wallet fell during the victim's struggle with his killer. And I would think that the killer would have noticed something like money scattering everywhere. Furthermore, as you can see, there was no effort made by the killer to gather the money. But... the wallet... Ah oh, yes, the wallet. You will also recall that the only fiend in it was Mr. Hicks' passport. Ugh. If you are really insisting that it was a crime based on greed, then you're claiming it was all for an empty travel wallet. I... 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 FORGIVE ME! What the heck? Are you saying you have the attendance wrong? So that guy isn't the killer. Yeah, don't believe it, everyone. It's a trick. Uh, will you all please? That's oh. me. Will you all please be quiet, Miss Tenero? Yes. You lost your cool when you saw the dead body. Plus, the lounge was dark, and looking into the light from the elevator, it's easy to see how you mistook the wallet in my hand for the murder weapon. I take no offense that you thought it was I was the killer, Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you for releasing me. I'm seemingly the only one telling you are! Well, what is it now? Who is this? Sorry, he's the only one here! Miss Tenero, if you could please translate, I'd be much obliged. It sounds like Borginian, but I. I don't understand any of it. There's another attendant on this flight who. I said that he is giving the roundabout! I don't require an interpreter. I speak English just well, see? You, the attendant. Yes, sir. I want this person to be under the arrest until we arrive at the airport. Uh... Is that it? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but what exactly are you hoping for? What is it you want? I am finished talking to the likes of you. Please, I would like to hear why you would like me to be under held under arrest until we land. <laughs> You! How dare you try to waste my time! You are the one who stuck your nose into my affairs! <laughs> I wanted to spend even- I wanted to spend even at least one more second with my precious art. I have no time for other things. I know what you are. I see through you. Insolvent! 
Yes, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it in English. Well, I'd hope that I don't dissolve in water, but I won't think that's what I don't think that's what you meant. I'm sorry, but I don't think I caught your name. I am Ziegler Blanc the Second. I'm a very wealthy man in Zaborginia. <laughs> My accent is changing over there. <laughs> what accent would he have? It's Western European, so it could be so much. It could be so much. Pick, it, take your pick. Kind of, maybe sort of Italian mixed with Middle Eastern. You were Easter. like slightly turning into um, what was it? Mr. Beldine? <laughs> no. no, you sounded like the dog from Spy Fox 2. I can't let you in, Laddie, until the sign says open. I, I, was I giving him a Scottish accent? I don't Slightly. think I was. Slightly. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah, I know. This, is, this the, is tough. This is the struggle that I have, too. Meanwhile, I want to meet the Borginian uh, flight attendant. <laughs> oh, I know you, too. <laughs> You're going to fuck the voice here. <laughs> um, but I am not an ordinary rich man. I am an art dealer, a rich seller of you. Not right. He's like Arg. grumpy. Arg, me hearty. <laughs> A rich seller of beauty. That's better. Yeah. Mr. LeBlanc, what did you mean just now? Pardon? Um, when you said that Mr. Edgeworth was giving me the runabout. I have to explain. Unbelievable. I will save once and only once. I do not even have one second to waste. Time is money, as they say. Yes, and yet you continue to blabber on. I saw it, yes I did, I saw the victim go onto the elevator. Going down into the lounge! It was exactly at six o'clock! When did Edgeworth pass out? <laughs> or when did he wake six. up? Oh, okay. And what is the significance of that time? At six, he says. Well, wait, you saw him at six? Ah! Uh, what's the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? He understands, I see. Mrs. Attendant, what time did you discover the body? Well, it was a little after that patch of turbulence, so I would say 6.15. Ah! Hicks was his name, was it? When I say that man Hicks was killed in the 15 minutes time span. Am I the only person in the lounge, or, and the only person in the lounge was that prosecutor, yes? His face is red. <laughs> red this guy is tomato. angry. Yeah, I was in my seat the whole time. M me too. I was watching the movie and enjoying a fine glass of grape juice. Oh, I guess it's all grape juice. I was still eating. Still haven't finished. See, he's a whole baguette there, and a giant Sunday. All the first class passengers, though. The other passengers have an alibi, so you have no problem with them, I suppose. No complaint. I see. Not a single word against this, right? How big is this airplane? I just realized. It's pretty big. I have no way of discounting what you have put forth at this point, but it wasn't me. Oh, so you say. But do you have, what do you say, the evidence? Mr. Edgeworth, are you really the culprit after all? Mr. LeBlanc, I suppose you are quite certain of what you saw, enough to give testimony? Of course! I was looking at that man the whole time. He was playing with that annoying little, um, small machine the whole time. Machine? Yes, that's what your people call it in English, yes. It was making me crazy with that click, click, click. From that description, it sounds like some sort of small computer. I believe what Mr. LeBlanc is talking about is a cell phone. How old is LeBlanc? <laughs> oh, 62. Wow, he looks great. He looks 62. great. From the North, oh, North European Republic of Borginia. Says he's a wealthy art dealer, time obsessed. Oh, it's North Europe. Well, whatever. So maybe it was, it's like more Ukrainian or something. <laughs> I don't know if I can do a Ukrainian accent though. No, don't, <laughs> no. I have to say I did see him playing with it quite a bit myself. A simple cell phone, a laptop or organizer I can see, but that's kind of low budget. I hate that noisy little machine in his hand. Not a fragment of beauty. All it produces is ugly sounds. Okay, I've got the got voice down now. Yep, you got it. Anyway, I know what I saw. Miss Tenero. Yes. I was wondering if I might be granted permission to examine the crime scene. What? You want to examine the crime scene? If you would grant me a little measure of time, I'm sure I can produce the real culprit. Hint! <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Fox in the duck pen. Yes, I think that is how you say it in English. It's Fox guarding the hen house. And I believe my innocence was proven earlier. And if I'm given the chance, I can clear up all the remaining doubts. Miss Tenero, if you wait until we arrive, there is a good chance that some evidence will have been destroyed by then. 
I understand. Let me see what the captain has to say. Ha! This should not be approved! Please, Mr. LeBlanc, in an emergency, all decisions are to be made by the captain alone. Now, please wait here while I go ask the captain what to do. I'll be right back. LeBlanc is one of the least liked characters in the series. <laughs> he's, uh, such really? a but he's such a butt. Oh, I mean, maybe. <laughs> you are not planning to erase evidence when you are doing your investigation, yes? Of course not. Ha! We will see. Mr. Edgeworth, you have the captain's permission to investigate the crime scene. What? what? Unbelievable! I am in your debt, Miss Tenero. However, there is one condition. I am to supervise you. Can you agree to that? Of course. I see no problem with that stipulation. It's only natural, as I am still a suspect in this case. <laughs> I'm turning into the Hulk! <laughs> <laughs> I take full responsibility and will watch Mr. Edgeworth's every move. I hope this is reassurance enough that there will be no foul play. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, shall we proceed? If you should need my help with anything, please feel free to touch the partner button. Oh, I forgot to do that, like, in the last case. It's fine. Oh, well, I don't think I'm sure I had anything really interesting to say. It's time to head to the scene of the crime, the first floor lounge. Oh, I was hoping for that flight attendant to pop up. Nope, not yet. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. Got some crazy characters this time. But I didn't see Francisca on the plane. She's not on the plane! You what don't even her? know she's in this game! It was her hair! It had to have been! <laughs> There's only one person with one type of hair in the game, obviously. Kind of. I mean, they, they usually... Okay, Acby Hicks has the young Christoph slash Clavier hairstyle. I don't want it to be of him. <laughs> Besides, the, the person had, like, a not male physique. I guess. It was a silhouette, and it was chopped up That's from the true. top screen to That's the bottom true. screen. Chopped. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're going to explore the airplane a bit. Until we Woo! Just like Buzzy the Nautilus. I was going to say that. <laughs> now that's a lot of gas. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.